So in this episode, we're going to step it up a notch and I'm basically going to create a use case for Webpack. So basically a use case is why do we actually need to use Webpack and uh, all that nonsense? Why do we want to go for the pain? So let's create a about.html. I'm just going to do the same thing I do with the my index page. I'm going to copy here and here I'm going to say hello about and here I'm going to say hello index. So we just know what pages we're on uh, in the index. Let's create a link to the about page. A href is dot about HTML. Let's put the same one here. Let's link to index index.html here let's put it up oh let's see this work okay cool so one thing is you know these uh, scripts we're importing so imagine you have multiple pages and for every page you'd have to import this uh, view js and you know if you have a hundred pages it's going to get tiring and if you're going to change one package you will have to update it for all 100 pages and that is going to be painful all right so another thing i want to point out is you don't really want these uh, scripts living around in your html so let's go and create a new folder and i'll call it js Right, so this is where I'm going to store my JavaScript files. I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to call index.js. And in this index.js file, I'm just going to grab this up here. I'm going to put, put it here. Now let's delete this. Actually, not delete, but rather set the source to JS index. And I'm going to do the same with the about. So copy this, make a about.js, paste this here, let's close both of these. Let's delete this and same as before, set the source to js about.js. Let's refresh this. And index is not working because I missed the dot. Cool. And there we go. So it's all still working. So you can see we have a little bit of a bit of repetition here. We have this node modules that we import here and that we import here. And then we have this about script that we import here as well. Primary point of repetition is this uh, view.js. So we'd rather import it globally, but we have two different pages. So we can't. Uh, how, how do we go about fixing that? So this is where Webpack comes in, and this is where Webpack can help us out a lot. Let's go into here, and let's just clear all of this stuff. And let's go ahead, npm install Webpack. <laughs> Not Webpack, but rather Webpack. So after that has finished downloading the whole internet, let's take a look at our node modules. You might need to press the press the refresh button here, but yeah. And you may be like, whoa, what are all these? We just installed Webpack. View was one pack. View was one folder. Webpack, what is all this? So don't fret. Let's step for each of these folders one by one. So the bit, I'm joking. We're not going to do that. So the main thing, all these folders are basically Webpack dependencies. So you can see here, added 300. 21 packages blah 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 it's basically webpack has a lot of dependencies so a dependency is literally what it sounds like so one module depends on another module and without that module it cannot work so when you install webpack you install all of its dependencies as well so webpack can function correctly let's take a look at our package.json let's get rid of this terminal and uh, here we can see webpack so it's in our dependencies and there is something that we have there are two types of dependencies that we have we have dependencies for our production and we have dependencies for our development environment 
Now, Webpack is a bundling tool. It takes your JavaScript files and it basically reor reorganizes your de uh, development environment into your production environment. And uh, hopefully that will make more sense in the future if it doesn't right now. But basically, the main thing is that Webpack is not going to be used in your production once your app is served on the internet. Webpack is going to be used only to build the production environment. So we don't need it in our dependencies here. Let's delete it. Let's open up our terminal. And let's do npm install. It erred, but hopefully didn't delete all of it. So let's npm install again. All right. Worst fears confirmed. I forgot a comma. Now let's do npm install. OK, now let's refresh. And there we go. So everything, all the webpack is pretty much gone. And uh, you don't really have to uninstall it. But basically, I just wanted to show you how to install it directly into your development environment. And you, to do this, you can just add a flag in the end, dash D. And again, once they've finished redownloading the internet inside our console, and let's take a look here. So here you can see our development environment. If we refresh the node modules folder, uh, nothing changes. So we pretty much have all of our uh, node modules pretty much looking the same. So it just it puts all the uh, JavaScript packages in the same folder, which is node modules. And that's where they live. So now we know our development dependencies, the packages that our development environment depends on, and the packages that our production environment, our actual, our applic, our actual application depend that depends on. So this will be it for this one. And in the next episode, we're actually gonna take a look at creating our Webpack config and running Webpack.